Good afternoon, dear colleagues. And it is difficult to say something meaningful within 15 minutes. So I'll be speaking extremely fast and we'll be just touching upon certain things just briefly. Uh, there is another delicate. OK, I'll skip this. And this is uh, uh, the structure of mail marketing system in Russia. And this is the slide that we are also going to skip, but that slide proves that in the world, not only in the tourist business, people keep believing emails. So people have faith in the email marketing, and email marketing is older than internet marketing. People keep investing in emailing. But I do hope that uh, I don't need to prove this point for the two operators. So the first limitation which we have here, there are two types of emailing campaigns. First one is B2B type. So between two travel two operators and travel agents. In my professional pers view, they work, but they are extremely, let, let's say they are ugly. But those people who consume your information, who is a professional consumer of your information, they have to consume it no matter how you pack this information. This is what these people get, are getting paid for. And this is, the, this is the difference between a professional emailing campaign and the consumer-focused emailing campaign. Because you have a brand, you have your own subscribers. Uh, but people from the market don't have to consume your information. But in a lot of cases, they don't want to, whereas you want to make them consume it. So we'll talk about it in the second part of the presentation. So talking about painful issues, let's start with purely technical ones. And the main challenge is this. Are we going to organize the emailing campaign ourselves or through a third party? When we say a third party, we mean automating email s systems like Unisender, MailChimp, MRCs, and a number of others. But in reality, the travel industry is different. Is different because it is in the tourism area, and tourism was the first sector which felt the full potential of email marketing. Tourism sector has great experience. It, it is so big that it starts hurting us. A lot of companies are still still do the do these emailing campaigns on their own themselves, which is not the way to do it in 2018 and 2017. Why? Because they have made. Because now we are commu all our communication needs to be completely transparent. Not only we know the name of our consumers, we know what they click on, how they click on things, which devices they use to access our website. So we must use this information to make our interaction more efficient. Whereas. Uh, our own resources and our own technical solutions cannot fully leverage of the, on this information. But if we take a look at the task that we face, these are typical tasks for mass mailing platforms. That's, uh, this is not a rocket science. And a big number of companies work with these mass mailing platforms. You know, Avia Sales. Avia Sales does not have its own emailing system. They, they buy get response. Burbank is buying Sensei. Airflot is buying another thing. But they do not create one of their own. But in the tourist business, you will find lots of small and proud companies who would like to walk their own way. But it is time to get off that track. Stop uh, your email marketing from being a black box. You should clearly know what you are sending and what you are getting, or what you are not getting, as the case may be. And the, there are well widespread email service providers in Russian market. These are professional platforms, and they're not very costly. Your system administrator may cost you a lot more. And God forbid something happens, and it will happen, and, and nobody will, uh, will save you if you do your emailing campaigns yourself. So I probably should have stopped here. But there is one rule uh, well known for all IT people. If your system works, don't touch it. If you're not going to introduce new scripts and new scenarios, and if your emailing system works, think twice or thrice before moving to a different system. Because 
a move to a new system will be like enduring to house fires. So because your old system may provide you with benefits like, for example, low cost of ownership, good uh, link to your booking system. So from the technological perspective, it may be difficult to move away from it. So you, 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 you can use SMTP service. Ask your IT guy, how are you using a professional SMTP server? And if he's not looking you straight into the eyes, then keep asking more questions, sort it out. So this is a technical background, but let's, uh, let's switch to emails first, because as marketing people, we think in terms of text messages. So the key challenge here is what is what should be the subject of our mail? How do we make it smart? How do we make it engagement? How do we make our mail go through all the information filters our consumers may have? There is one, let's say, delusion here. The subject is not the first thing that you, that user pay attention to. Not only they also take a look at who is the sender. And just just look at yourselves. Try to track your own, let's say, feelings. You tend to open those emails who, let's say, from people who you know. So the title comes second. For marketing people, it is very important to take a look at the marketing campaign from the consumer perspective. You, uh, so that the user has his or her own mailbox. And let's look at how marketing experts look at it. Everything highlighted in red is uh, unrealized opportunities. Uh, this is what we could but do, but we didn't. Uh, so it's a missed opportunity. Uh, it's a lost space. Uh, let's take this penal service. More than half of the space it had that it could use was actually harmful because there was some uh, inside information which really didn't help to use this. And where do we take those things? They are snippets. They are taken from the top letter. And so no one would even think that uh, these snippets would go there. But if we look at the analytics, It gives us uh, plus 3 or plus 5 percent to opening the emails. Uh, maybe it's based on 20 million emails. Uh, in some cases, it's a really small impact. But if there is one sentence that you can use and you can add 3 to 5 percent of the audience to that, you can't neglect it. And there's uh, one other thing about headlines. Uh, that's uh, the manner of formulating your headlines. Uh, headlines can be very different. They can be shocking, intriguing, and so on and so forth. But it's not about the words that we put in there. It's about the meaning that we want to convey to our users. Let's take the split test for one of our customers. This is a big car holding. It's uh, the same email campaign that we used uh, with uh, two different car salons. Uh, there was one boring but informative topic, and there was uh, one less helpful but uh, interesting topic, which actually had more openings. That's excellent. Someone used a creative approach, and this is how we made more people open this email. But it's important for us that people, after opening this email, to behave in a certain way. And this boring letter with a boring topic brought more people to the necessary place. So whom are you thinking about when you write this email? Are you thinking about readers or buyers? Because usually the opening of a letter is a simulated indicator. It's not a very appropriate indicator. And now that we've started talking about an email, let's talk about how it should look like. Uh, the colors should really be bright because uh, the modern letter should tell the receiver within a split second uh, 
what the buyer, what the reader should do. I've taken some relevant examples. Thomas Cook, you don't need to introduce it. Some others are also well-known companies. And here I have Norwegian Cruiser, a Norwegian company which for some unknown reason sends emails in French. And you can see that those letters are getting brighter and shorter. Once a person has opened our letter, we have about one or two seconds for this person to understand what has happened and carry out the proper action. So it's not a good way to write a lot of sentences. So this letter should be very clear, very short, very understandable, and we don't need the reader to use their brains. So sometimes it turns out that behind those clicks, we lose the loyalty of our users. It's difficult to calculate it. Ideally, we need to increase the life cycle of a client so that the client stays with us for years. And we need to carry out a simple cohort analysis. Not every system allows it. But this is what we need to do. And let's look at the frequency of uh, emails. This is how often Thomas Cook writes. If we look at TUI, TUI is less frequent. Should it be less frequent? Not suddenly. Coral Travel writes even less frequently. Does it mean that they do it the right way? Actually, without having the particular analysis and the particular data, we can't understand whether it's good or bad, so the right conclusion will be as follows. Look at your users, analyze them, try to understand how quickly they get bored from you. If they get bored uh, too quickly from you, then you've chosen the wrong approach. So to make sure that your letter is appropriate, look at it. There are some very simple ways. For example, you can see that people still react very well to interactive tools. You can use some animation, GIF animation, because sometimes people are really lazy. You make a clear focus on the main sentence. And it's also gamification, because it's, it works in email marketing as well. And it's not like having a contest on the website. Uh, it's uh, when you try to play with a person just inside the letter. Otherwise, it's not gamification. It's just a promo campaign of your contest. Uh, now, the email campaigns, uh, a few professional remarks. So what can you see here? There are a lot of sentences, and people never read this. People will just read a couple of sentences, and that's all. This is the Dominicana Republic, but there are no links. We need to try to help a person carry out a certain action, and there are no links here. So it's uh, neglecting the interests of uh, your users. This is a more complicated example. This is the call for action. This is what we want to offer. And what we tell them is, uh, first, uh, you should go somewhere, and then we'll tell you what will happen there. So the logic is wrong here. People don't like it. Readers don't like it. And there's an example from my hometown, Yekaterinburg, where it's not clear what uh, people want from us. When there are a lot of focuses uh, in uh, an email, it's the same as if there were none of them at all. We are not going to discuss the spam filters here. The only thing that I recommend, each of you does email marketing. It's a great service, which is free of charge. Check your letters there uh, to, to see whether it's a spam. Maybe your letters are, your emails are not efficient because no one sees them. And you need to collect data from four sources, from 
your email distribution system from your CRM system because uh, only this system can show you some real results. And postmaster systems which uh, tell you whether your email arrived at its destination or not. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Actually, I have one minute for one question. Uh, one small remark. Uh, you know, Daniel, I had this experience when I worked uh, with uh, foreign email campaigns uh, and with its statistics. You will never believe me. There was one example when there was a con better conversion rate for long emails than for small emails. So it's all very individual. That's right. Uh, there is uh, no final truth in email marketing. If we take two very similar operators, uh, we can see that people react differently to the same scenario because each tourist operator has different client uh, customer base. Each um, tourist operator has a different relationship uh, with uh, its clients, which is why every experience should be analyzed. Uh, 